Okay, so today we're going to talk about lipids. So if you recall the last video, we talked about macromolecules, making and breaking them down. And then we talked about carbohydrates, and carbohydrates was Roman numeral number two. It's the first type of macromolecule. And so now we're going to do uh, Roman numeral number three, which is lipids. And so, that's what we're going to write at the top here, all right, Roman numeral number three, lipids. And lipids are hydrophobic, remember that means that they don't mix with water, which means that they're polar. They're hydrophobic macromolecules, meaning that they're big molecules, that are not, I'm going to put big letters and not polymers, meaning, remember what a polymer is? It is not made of repeating smaller units. It's the only macromolecule that this is not the case for, all right? So, but they're still underneath the macromolecule umbrella because they're large molecules important to living things. So there are three different kinds of lipids that you need to know about. So the first ones are called um, triglycerides. Or sometimes they're called, you'll see the word um, triacylglycerol. I just want you to know that that is the same as that. Or in layman's terms, a lot of times we'll just see it called fats. All right, so any of those three are talking about these molecules that we're going to talk, look at now. All right, so why do they call it triglyceride? Tri means three, so you have three of something. So let's do number one. Um, they're made of one glycerol molecule and three fatty acid molecules. So let's talk about that, a glycerol. All right, that's where glyceride comes from and the tri comes from the three fatty acids. So <clears throat> the glycerol is three carbons long, and it ends in OL, which means that it's an alcohol, which means that it has the hydroxyl groups attached to it. So there's OH, three OHs. So let's go ahead and draw that. And then carbon makes four bonds. All the other bonds are hydrogens. So that's what your glycerol molecule looks like. Glycerol. And then you have a fatty acid. Fatty acids look like this, where it's carbon, and what makes an acid, the carboxyl group. So C with a double bonded H and an OH. And then it has a chain of carbons. And then every other, whoops, um, every other bond between the, with the carbons is a hydrogen. That's a fatty acid. So this is one fatty acid. And then what happens is there's three of them. I'm not gonna go ahead and draw three, but I'm gonna show you something. So these guys hook together to make a triglyceride. How do things hook together? What do you do? You lose a water molecule. That's called a dehydration reaction. So let me grab my blue here marker. And what happens is this hydrogen and this OH come off, so they lose a H2 and H2O, all right? So that's called dehydration reaction. And so now this oxygen is no longer bonded to this hydrogen, and this is no longer bonded to this carbon. So the carbon is looking to bond to something, and the oxygen is looking to bond to something. So guess what? They bond together. All right, and so what happens is then what would look, what would come off of this is the C bonded to the O, bonded to the C, and then you have the rest of the molecule. And so there's three fatty acids that would do that. So they would attach here and here. So um, I'm gonna abbreviate fatty acid FA. Okay, so, so there's one fatty acid, 
you'd have another fatty acid that would bond here and another fatty acid that would lose a water molecule and attach here. So you'd have a glycerol with three fatty acids. So this is figure 313 in your textbook. So this is a completed fat molecule, all right? And so here's your glycerol, and those are your three fatty acids, all right? Notice that the fatty acids aren't the same, so that's what we're gonna talk about next. That bond between the fat the fatty acid and the glycerol um, is called an ester linkage. It has a special name. So I guess we can write that here, just so that if you see it somewhere, all right, I'm gonna use that same purple and just draw that here. This is called an ester linkage. So let's, I'm gonna put here C, figure 313. All right, so let's talk about those fatty acids. So I'm gonna put B, or sorry, two, got ahead of myself, two. All right, so the, they're made of one glycerol and three fatty acids. I'm gonna write here, again, abbreviating fatty acids, FA. Um, they may differ based on length. And, um, and location slash number of double bonds. I'm gonna explain that here. So um, this is shown in figure 314, but I'm also gonna explain it right now here. I'll show you 314 in just a second. All right, so they're different on length. So the fatty acids, I drew this one. All right, this has five carbons. You could have 10 carbons, you could have 20 carbons. So every fatty acid is a hydrocarbon chain made out of just carbons and hydrogens with that carboxyl group. And so it makes it um, acidic, that's the acid part. This part, the hydrocarbon though, is hydrophobic. That's why it's a hydrophobic molecule. So the molecule with the three fatty acids because it's mainly carbons and hydrogens. Remember those are nonpolar covalent bonds and that makes the molecule nonpolar and not be able to dissolve in water. So that's what I mean by the length. So let's talk about the number, uh, location and number of double bonds. So underneath here, we're gonna write, we're gonna talk about two types of fatty acids, saturated fatty acids. Let's do that first. Saturated fatty acids. All right, so this is, you have your fatty acid, here's your carboxyl group. And then your book shorthands um, the carbon chain by drawing it like this. And so I want to make sure that you understand that when if you look at your textbook, they'll go like this, 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 this. All right, what they're um, assuming you know is that, um, that this, since it's a, a fatty acid, that this is a hydrocarbon chain at each point that they didn't put a letter, that's a carbon atom. And they're assuming that you also know that carbon makes four bonds and that um, since this is a hydrocarbon chain, that each of these carbons would make two additional bonds and they would be to hydrogens. But just to make it simple um, and less cluttered, um, they do it this way, assuming that we know those things. So I wanted to make sure that you knew those things. All right, so let's write about, this is a saturated fatty acid. So why do they call it saturated? So we're gonna write some things that are true about saturated fatty acids over here. All right, um, they have the maximum number of hydrogen attached. Meaning that you couldn't um, attach more hydrogen than you could um, than than they already have because each carbon can only make four bonds. So if this carbon has two hydrogen attached to it, there's nothing that you could do to add more hydrogen. So it, we would say that it's saturated with hydrogen. This will make a little bit more sense when we look at unsaturated. 
we'll come back to that. Um, it's usually linear, meaning that the carbon chain is kind of in a straight line, all right? And again, we'll compare it to unsaturated and you'll see more what I mean there. Um, that means that because it's linear, they can pack tightly together. They can pack close together. And because they can pack close together, they're solid at room temperature. And let me give you an example of a saturated fat, um, a, a fat that has saturated fatty acids um, is bacon grease. When bacon grease cools, it solidifies. All right, so it's solid at room temperature. I'm gonna put here most examples come from an animal source. From animal sources. So that's your saturated, um, that's different than unsaturated. So let's look at unsaturated. Fatty acid. All right, so I'm gonna draw that here. So I'm gonna draw that it's a fatty acid, so it still has the carboxyl group. So there's the carboxyl group. And then for this, <clears throat> um, Unsaturated means that there's a double bond between two of the carbons in the um, hydrocarbon chain. So let me draw that here. So I'm gonna draw here a couple of kinks here, and then I'm gonna draw two lines. That's gonna represent a double bond between the carbon at this point and a double bond to the carbon at this point. And then, um, it, then at, whenever there's a double bond, that causes a change in shape, it causes a, a kink. So I'm gonna put this like this, all right? So again, here's a carbon here, a carbon here, there's one carbon here, one carbon here, all right, in our hydrocarbon chain. All right, so, um, so this is unsaturated. So um, in this case here, they do not, put not in big letters here, do not have the maximum Oops, number of hydrogen attached. Meaning that since this carbon and this carbon has a double bond, you could break this double bond and attach a hydrogen to each one of them to fulfill the four bonds. So you could attach more hydrogen. That's why here there's no double bond, so each carbon has two hydrogen attached to it. Um, and so here, if you were, these two carbons would only have one hydrogen attached to it to make the four bonds. And so you could break that bond and add another hydrogen. All right, so that's why it's unsaturated. Uh, we're gonna write that kinks occur at the location of the double bond. They cannot, in big words, cannot pack closely enough to solidify. What that does is make them liquid at room temperature, most of them. Um, and so an example would be like vegetable oil. Okay, so I'm gonna put here that most examples of unsaturated fats come from plant sources. Um, there's always exceptions, like fish oil is one of those, um, and so on. All right, so that's an unsaturated. So saturated versus unsaturated. So when we go back over, these are, go back over how to make a triglyceride, three different fat, fatty acids attach here. So some of the 
the fatty acids could be saturated, some are unsaturated, so that can change. Um, so that all three can be different. And so what happens is if you have um, all three that are straight, all three of them are saturated, then one fatty acid can, can get close to another fatty acid. If I were to just um, draw like this instead of glycerol like this, if I were to draw this is the, I'll draw it down here. If this is the glycerol molecule and then you have three fatty acids and all three fatty acids are straight, um, they're saturated. That means that one fatty, uh, one fat, so this is one fat made out of glycerol and three fatty acids, can get real close to another fat and a real close to another fat and so on, versus if the, they're unsaturated. So now if we have a fat or triglyceride made out of unsaturated fatty acids, you're gonna have kinks like this. And so do you see that? So they won't be able to, to um, pack closely together, which is why they don't solidify in our um, uh, liquid at room temperature. Alrighty, so then let's write here, so number three about triglycerides. A triglyceride is classified as a saturated or unsaturated fat based on what type of fatty acids are attached to it. So this right here would be an unsaturated triglyceride because it has three unsaturated fatty acids. And you, all you need is just one. I put all three. You could have just one fatty acid like this, all right? And this would still be, consider, be considered an unsaturated fat. We would call this, um, po, uh, if we have polyunsaturated, uh, meaning that you have more than one chain that's unsaturated. Poly means many. All right, and then lastly, the function of a triglyceride is energy storage. All right, so um, actually, I'm gonna put a little bullet here, one gram of fat stores two times as much energy as one gram of um, polysaccharide, like starch. So it's very energy rich, which means that we don't need very much of it in our diet. So if we have too much fat in our diet, we don't need that much energy. And so we'll store it um, in special cells called adipose cells in our body. All right, so that's triglycerides. So I'm going to go to a new page here and talk about the other two types of lipids. So letter B is the phospholipids. All right, these guys are made of one glycerol, two Fa, which is fatty acids, and one phosphate group. So it's very similar in construction to the triglyceride, except instead of three fatty acids, we replace it with a phosphate group. And I'm gonna put here, this is figure 315. And I'm gonna show you that, let me grab it. All right, so this is what it looks like. This is your, your glycerol. Here are two fatty acids. So this is unsaturated fatty acid. This is a saturated one. So you see the kink there. And instead of a third fatty acid, you have a phosphate group attached. And sometimes it has chemical groups coming off of it. And so that's how one phospholipid is different. One of the reasons why one phospholipid can be different than another. All right, so that's, but all of the phospholipids have that phosphate group. And so, um, let's go back. I'm gonna draw this in a little bit um, 
uh, more simple manner. Um, oftentimes, this part right here, since it has the phosphate group, is called the head, and it's polar because it has the phosphate group, um, as well as the carboxyl groups, the acidic groups of the fatty acids, and this part is hydrophobic. And so, <clears throat> oftentimes, they don't draw all, all the atoms, um, and sometimes it's drawn like this because we're going to see that it is comprises the phospholipid bilayer of cell membranes. So that's what we're going to go over now. Okay, so, so we have real generic basic construction is a glycerol molecule, two fatty acids, and up here is a phosphate group. All right, and this part um, is polar or hydrophilic. We call that the polar head. And these are the nonpolar tails. All right, so these guys don't mix with water. This does, it's attracted to water. So let's relate that to oftentimes how phospholipids are depicted shorthand in um, computer-generated pictures. They'll just go like this, or this right here, and they'll have this part right here coming down. So this would be color coding here, your polar head, and so we would know that that's your glycerol and your phosphate group, and then your nonpolar tails. This is if the fatty acids are saturated because there's no kinks. We could also have them unsaturated like this. All right, so oftentimes they're depicted that way. All right, so then number two with this is that these guys are a major part of cell membranes. As I said, earlier. So oftentimes you'll see it drawn like this, a phospholipid bilayer. And I'm not going to go draw that all the way around, but this is your cell. Cell has a, the whole membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. So I'm going to write here that the heads face towards the water-based solution. inside and outside of the cell. So the heads in blue here, so these are your, the heads. And inside the cell you have cytoplasm, which is main, mostly water, and outside the cell, cells are bathed in a fluid called the extracellular fluid that are also made mostly of water. So it's composed mostly of water. The tails, face inward or away from the water because they are nonpolar. And so remember that then what they're not they don't have a charge and so water is not attracted to them. And that is your phospholipids. All right, so just like the triglycerides, phospholipids can differ based upon chemical groups attached to the phosphate group as well as if the fatty acids are saturated or not. And then last but not least is letter C, which is your steroids. So number one for steroids. So a lot of people don't, don't know that this is underneath the lipid category. So your carbon skeleton which means just how the carbons are hooked together, consists of four fused rings. What does that mean? The rings share a side. And in your book, that's figure 316. I'm gonna go ahead and draw it here just to give you an example. All right, so here, all right, so we have six-sided ring, and then the next ring shares this side, all right? So we're gonna do another six-sided ring. 
This ring, though, has a double bond right here, let's say. So that's a double bond between those two carbons. And then let's do another six-sided ring, and they're going to share this side. So I'm going to go up and over and up and over and up like that. And then lastly, we're going to do a five-sided ring. It looks like a house, and it's going to share this side like this. Okay? This is what I mean by four fused rings, all right? So they're sharing sides. And then each steroid, that's right here, each steroid differs. So steroids differ based on what chemical groups are attached to the rings. So, I'm going to use my um, blue again. So, so each point is a carbon atom. And so if they don't put we're gonna, uh, anything else, we're going to assume that the other two bonds, that e the other bonds that the carbons make are to hydrogens. But some might have, like there might be a steroid that has these four rings that has a hydroxyl group attached right here. Um, or might have a um, methyl group attached right here, methyl CH3, and so on. And so, but then another steroid might not have a hydroxyl group attached there, might have a hydroxyl group attached here. So it just depends on where those chemical groups, um, I'm gonna underline chemical groups here so that we can correspond that to this color coding. All right, so lots of different kinds of steroids based upon that, but one thing that they have in common is the four fused rings. So I'm gonna give an example of one that you're probably familiar with or heard of before, and that's cholesterol. Cholesterol is a steroid. And this is, we can get in our diet. We also make cholesterol in our liver as well. But cholesterol is a precursor to make other steroids. such as, and these two you probably have heard before, estrogen and testosterone. Okay, and so, um, so when we either eat cholesterol or make it in our liver, then in our, some cells we convert cholesterol um, by taking off certain chemical groups and adding other ones and convert it to estrogen and testosterone, which are um, hormones, all right? They're steroid hormones. Um, another thing um, that cholesterol is used um, for is, it also is a part of cell membranes. And we'll learn that more when we do the cell membrane chapter. But cholesterol is an important part of that. So those are your three lipids.